Hi, so today I'm going to be doing an LVDS connector on an A1286 Apple board. This is for the 2008 unibody MacBook Pro, the first one they had. This is a very, very scary Apple board because it has two GPUs on it. So one of the only things worse than an Apple motherboard that has one discrete GPU on it is an Apple motherboard that has two discrete GPUs on it. So when I look at this, I, I, I cringe, I get goosebumps, the hair stands up on my arm uh, because Apple does not no, fun they fundamentally have no idea how to design a system that cools down what they put inside of their computers. Anyway, so this is how this was sent in. Uh, this is the LVDS connector. Why am I doing that when I have the microscope camera on? I have no idea. So this is the, what you're looking at right here. And it is it is quite disgusting. Um, this is, make no mistake, this was not damaged by liquid this was not damaged by uh, by a drop this this was damaged by somebody who tried to fix it and they and they they truly failed so what i'm going to do here today is replace this connector and show you how it's done i did one video on this already the reason i'm redoing it is because that video sucked so in the video that you saw you were watching it with a 10 dollar knock off iron and the incorrect tip because I was not physically able to attach the tip that I needed to that iron to do the job. In this video you're going to see me do it with a iron that's about 150 bucks. It's a Weller WMP65. It is a much better tool for the job. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do in this process is use my Hacko FR801 to remove the old LVDS connector. This is a trusty hot air rework station. It is very very high quality compared to uh, any of that cheap IOE bunk th th that that's out there. So th the main thing about this is that unlike uh, it's a flamethrower. So unlike a lot of those things out there where you could spend all day on it and you wind up damaging the board because you're putting all this heat on all the components around it, with this thing I can remove the LVDS connector very very quickly because as again it's it's a flamethrower. So I'm going to see if I can get some kind of dual view going here. Eh, never mind, it's too much too much time. You can you can watch it come off in the microscope. So I'm gonna burn this to hell and back. Now again, don't worry about seeing me plastic melting and any of that stuff because it it truly doesn't matter. I should turn on my fume extractor here. What's important here is to not pull it. You don't want to pull this up. You don't want to pull this up off the board. What you want to do is you want to tap it and see that it's moving on its own. And there should be no resistance. There truly should be no resistance because if there is resistance, it means that one of these pins is still attached to a pad. And if one of the pins is still attached to a pad, you're going to be very, very screwed when you try to get this thing off the board because you're going to rip the pads along with it. So take your time. Again boil this LVDS connector. You don't want to take too much time, but if you have a good iron, if you have a good station that heats up to a decent amount, you know, you can, you can give it a minute and just let it come right off. See, this is what I want to see. I want to see no fighting, no arguing, just GTFO. Alright. And the second thing that we do here is get rid of all the old nasty solder. So that's all lead-free solder, which is, yuck, nasty, gross, pugh. I don't want anything to do with that junk. So I take the other iron here. You can't see anything in the camera, but I guess that's what the microscope's for anyway. I turn this one off, so of course that's not going to work. Screw it, I'll just use the micro. And we run this over here. So this is a very good quality Kester leaded solder with a no clean flux inside of it. I might as well just add a little bit of flux while I'm there. So this is also, this is a good flux. This is Amstec NC559-V2-TF. It's good stuff for this purpose. Uh, flux is what allows solder to flow. I'll try to show you an example of it later when I'm trying to get rid of a short that I know I'm very likely going to have. So without flux, the solder doesn't really flow nicely. That's why solder, a lot of solder has flux inside of it. So when you see the smoke coming out after you're done soldering, that's not actually the solder that the smoke is smoking. That's the flux inside of it. 
And then the flux is what allows solder to flow. So without flux, your solder winds up be you know barely moving. It's it's like trying to it, it's like trying to pour peanut butter upside down in the jar and expect it to just come out. That's what it's like when you have solder with no flux attached to it. It's very bad. It's pretty useless. So I've clearly overdone it here, and I don't care that I've overdone it and that I've added a lot because I'm going to be removing all of that junk anyway. So another one of my tools that I like here, in addition to the WMP65 iron that I just showed you and the FR801 rework station that I've showed you, is my Hakko 808 desoldering iron. Now they've since replaced this with newer, cooler models, but this one's still good. I mean, they say how the new one's better and all that, but... This thing's six years old, it still works, so why why would I buy a new one? So I'm gonna use this on the desk to remove this the solder. And let's see if I can get you a little bit of a better view, because this is something I can't do under the microscope since there's not enough room. Let's see how good this Sony zoom is. That's pretty good. All right. So what this does is it has a motor in the top and it has a nice soldering tip that allows me to suck up all the junky solder from the board. So the proper way to use this is to hold it down and then hit the button. Hold it down, hold the button. Hold it down, hit the button. The thing is you don't need to move it along because two things are going to happen when you move it along. A, it's possible to rip pads and traces. But most importantly, B, is that the thing is you can see the motor in it spinning is pretty much causing it to move anyway. So when you when you just move hit the motor on this when you just hit the button and it and it starts moving, it's going to naturally move along to where it's easy for it to move. But when you actually do this, when you like move it with your hand like this, you may actually be ripping a pad off of the board because there may be solder stuck to a pad. You're pushing, and that pad just comes right up. When you reach that point, and you're just hitting the button, and it's moving along. It'll stop when it hits that point, and then you'll know that's a point that I need to go over a little more carefully. Annoying noise, but good tool. It also, this thing also sold some of that plastic that was left there, a huge GTFO. All right. Oh, by the way, in terms of solder suckers, those little things where like you get at Radio Shack for like ten bucks, where um, all you do is you like you hit the top of it, you put the solder sucker right where you, you want to remove the solder. Uh, if you work at a place and you see that they have those things, uh, run away. Run it seriously, because that means that your boss is a cheapskate who, want, who is okay torturing you over the course of many jobs that are going to make you many thousands of dollars because he wants to try to save a uh, hundred bucks. That is not, again, if you work at a place where you need to remove solder and they hand you a solder sucker, quit. Uh, that is, it's, it's going to be a nightmare. It just it says something for the, for the, um, the culture, the business, the co and what, how it is they're going to be treating you. Like that shows that they don't want to invest. So if if you see that thing there and you suggest you spend 150 bucks to get a used Hack 0808 and they go no, it's at that point that it, you need to just simply turn around and leave. Seriously, I couldn't I could not be more serious with that. Uh, you are going to get you're going to get tortured working at places like that. You want to work at places where they think that if they invest in tools that are going to make things better, that allow you to do things you didn't do before, that they're going to make more money. So there are pretty much two types of businesses that you're going to find. You're going to find people who want to spend more money to make more money, and you're going to find people who think that if they uh, spend less, that they will make more as a result of having spent less. Now, the problem with the second philosophy is that there's only so much that you can save. Truly, there's only so much money that you can save because you have a, s a fixed set of expenses. But out there in the world, there is an infinite amount of money. So 
if you try to make more by spending more, you have infinite earning potential. But if you try to make more by spending less, you have a very, very limited earning potential. Which means that you you are working someplace, you are working some for somebody who is never going to grow, who is never going to take his business to the next level. Which means that you will never go to the next level. I'm moving freely with this thing because it's it's clean now, so I'm I'm able to move back and forth a little bit, and know that I'm not going to break anything. So the whole idea is to get those solder pads really, really flat. I use this instead of solder wick because I'm uncomfortable with the amount of heat that you need when you use solder wick. It's all a preferences thing. It truly is about what works for you. I used to work at places where you were expected to re-switch uh, audio consoles. So those are the things that you see in those pictures of old recording studios. It's sad that they're not around anymore, but... David, do you have any little bit of wick that I can use? Or do you have any of mine? Or Thanks, man. So, the, the thing is, with the, is that you would have, let's say, 24 switches per channel, 72 channels per console, and 8 or 10 leads per switch is that if you were doing it this way instead of with an automated tool like the hacker which is ding 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 you could you could spend your entire day uh, doing not you, like doing one channel I mean you could spend your entire day just doing one switch down there I mean if you had tools that sucked so th I kinda got used to using that so they had at Avatar they had this Zytronic soldering station that again Avatar is an amazing studio I learned a lot from the people who worked there that's that like that, that working at that place and working with the techs that I work with, that, that, that was a life-changing life experience. But they had a Zytronic soldering station that was a complete piece of shit. And Ricky Began was actually the one who turned me on to the Hacko 808, and I have been in love with that tool for six years. So I, I go over it with the wick just to get rid of anything that may be remaining. And then I clean it off with alcohol as best as I can. So you can see I have a nice clean connector area here. Okay, I go a little overboard with cleaning. Like with BGA sites or with graphics chips, this is important. With LVDS connectors, this is not important. It's just kind of a habit that I got into, and I try not to break the habit because if I do, if I stop doing it once and it works, that's that's what's bad. It's not when you do something messed up and I, and it doesn't work that you're in trouble. It's when you do something messed up and it does work because then you get used to doing it that way every time. You understand? And then eventually you do it that way and something happens that is pretty much the reason that that's considered the wrong way to do it and then you're screwed and that's always going to happen for that big customer that large corporate contract that person who is willing to tip you a hundred bucks if you could get it done in an hour it's like it's always going to happen to one of those it's never going to happen to the ones where it's low priority so it's good to get in the good habits but yeah, that that whole that solder sucker ad thing is ah uh, fuck that thing seriously. Um, like, like by by the time you actually get it into place, I like can have it all the way over. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, the solder sucker is that whole thing where let's say this is the sucker, but it all it does is suck. You hit a little button and the solder gets pushed up. You put it over here, but it doesn't make heat, so you have to have the soldering iron over there. But since the iron is over there, it means the solder sucker cannot be over the solder. So you have to take the soldering iron out, put it over, hit the button, and in the time it takes you to do that, the solder cools down. So it, it's, it's almost like a torture device because you never wind up getting the solder up with it. And there are people out there that say, I don't know what I'm doing, that I'm a, a crappy technician. Since I don't know how to use a solder sucker properly, that's why it doesn't work, and then I'm this jackass that spends money on things he doesn't need. But you know what? I'm honestly totally okay with that. Uh, I, if it means I never have to use that shit again. Like, if you're if you're a good enough technician that you can get by with that piece of shit, dude, you're you're, you're better at it than I am, truly. Because I have no desire to try to get by 
using that garbage. All right. And I'll okay, let's put the flux in. I put way too much because I lost that little thingy that goes on the end of it that allows the flux to come out in a fine area, which is why I have this disgusting mess. But this is all going to get clean later. This is, that really is too much flux there. That is just, that's a dumb amount of flux. The flux can be cleaned. So aligning the connector is important. On the new ones it's not because they have these little holes on the board and the little things that protrude out of the connector so it actually gets done for you. On the older ones, you have to align it manually. Manually. Boo. This is the part where you're going to notice if you didn't get the solder off of the pads right the first time. There's also a part that I suck at. Alright. Now, remember, as I said, solder is not going to move without flux. Solder is literally, it's, it's going to be like peanut butter sitting in a jar that you turn upside down if you try to put solder someplace when there's no flux. So, but here, see the, f the smoke coming out of the iron? I wait till all that burns away. Now I already have flux over here, so I don't really need to have a lot of flux in the iron. So I'm going to put some of that over there. And then I'm going to solder one end of this thing down. It doesn't have to be an amazing job at the moment because what I, I just want it to be down on this end enough that I can solder the other end. and. But again, I'd, and then at the end I'll make it look nice. But right now I really just want the thing to sit properly. Yeah, that's way too much flux. That is... I really do need to get that little thing. That the other thing, I buy this flux from Notebook Mechanics because I don't want to buy fake flux. And they used to send it with that shit. They, see, they used to send a syringe with all the little stuff in there that allowed me to shoot out little bits of flux at a time or lots. Like, it used to come with those extensions, and it doesn't anymore. I'm kind of sad about that. You know, a little sad. Or even worse than sad, disappointed. Remember when your parents used to say, I'm not, I'm not really angry, I'm just disappointed in you, and it was the worst thing in the world? That's how I feel right now. I'm not sad, I'm just disappointed. And you should never be soldering without adding new flux. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't plan on keeping that solder pad there like once the actual pins are done I'm gonna totally redo that and I just kinda wanna I don't even know where it has to sit yet so I have to align it properly alright good we're good so now I go on to my smaller solder this stuff is really small This is where having the good iron is going to make my life much easier. Before, trying to do this with that knockoff $10 hacko, let me tell you something. That was hell. And I did it because I had to, you know. You don't just tell the customer, hey, I, I left my uh, the stuff that I used to make money in my other bag, so sorry, not much I can do. No, that's bullshit. You make do with what you have to get the job done. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to keep that garbage tool. I don't need this right now so I can go off.
Eh, too many shorts, too early, and boo. Let's just start getting rid of some of those before I drive myself nuts. That's where having good flux comes in. With having good flux is going to make getting rid of all that crap super easy. Being able to dispense the flux nicely would also make it super easy. I've been buying this flux from them for like three and a half years now, and the one time I decided to throw away the tube that had the little out nice thing on it that let it come out easier is the one time that they didn't send it to me with that little piece. That is truly too much flux. That is way too much, oh my god. Oh my god. This is a horror film, not a how-to video. This is turning into a horror movie, right bef before my eyes. You're probably thinking that I have cancer right now with the amount of flux that I've um, inhaled. One of the things I want to show you that I have here that I just got new, which is pretty cool, is this uh, 
this thing. So this is a really, really powerful fan with a little filter in it. So what it does is it sucks up all the flux and the fumes and the crap as I'm working. And it blows it out. And then I have a fan in my bathroom. So this is a 1800 CFM fan. So uh, since I can't open the window all the way here, it's right next to the BGA machine, so that's going to fuck that up. And also, even if, uh, even if I did break the window open so that I could open it properly, uh, you know, I have the BGA machine there. So I have that fan in the bathroom that exhausts everything, and I got a vent above my head for the air conditioner. And then I have uh, this nice uh, two or three hundred dollar air purifier behind me which is pretty cool. So it does a good job with this stuff. So let's go back down the line and see what I can do. So what I was trying to show you is this whole thing where you can do it sideways and just do one after the other after the other. And I've done it a couple of times like that and it worked perfectly. But every time I try to do it in the video, it comes out as a nightmare. So let's try that again. See what happens. Oh, too much flux, boo. Can't see. I really do need to get that little thing that goes in the tip that helps the dispense easier. So this is the idea here is you go, well, not that one obviously, but let's try a different pin. Lay the solder down. You do something like that, except without making it short. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to accept that it's not meant to be for this video. And truly, I've done this and it's worked perfectly, but since I'm trying to do it in a video, it's not. But allows, the whole idea is you can do like one after the other after the other, like, do you see that one, that one? All right, the one that I just did, that's how you want all these to go. Man, as I said, I plan on having fuck-ups in this channel. I plan on filming everything. I'm not going to edit out the, the crap that doesn't go the way I want just because it doesn't portray me in the best light. I want this channel to be the truth, so this video is going to go up like that. But you see how pin 38 came out? That's how it's supposed to be. Let's try another one like that. So you do this. You just push in the side right. See that? That's a, that's a, that's good. Right, that's a joint. That's not good. So you have the the flux there, and you have the solder over there. You heat it, and you just push it right up to the component lead like that. It's also easier if I could hold the damn solder straight. But I can't. Life's not fair. What are you going to do? Yeah, I have very unsteady hands, so. And it's something that I'm reminded of regularly since this is what I do for a living. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, you, you kind of have to learn how to use what you have to get by in life, you know? Like, there are going to be people who are better you, you at certain things, and you're not really going to be able to change that. But you have to use a combination of your wits, you know, every, every part of your brain. Like, if you're not good at analytical thinking, but you're good at memorization, you know, find a part of your job where memorization is actually going to help you and try to, you know, and try to excel there. If you're really good, let's say you're not good at analytical thinking or memorization, but you have perfectly steady hands and you work really fast with them. See, while well, somebody else is probably only going to make 85 bucks a day fixing iPhones, you may be able to make 300 a day fixing iPhones. You know, I don't have steady hands. I know if I, my job was to fix iPhones all day, I'd probably make, you know, 30 bucks doing it. But I'm good at analytical thinking. And I'm good at figuring this stuff out. So I do this. Now, again, uh, there are parts of it that I'm just not good at, like this, pretty much. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do it. Just cause it just means I'm going to focus on what I am and have other people do the stuff that I'm not good at. Now, unfortunately, I'm not at a point where I found anybody who can do this, but you can bet your ass. I mean, damn, you could bet your ass that once I have somebody else doing this, I am not going to be the one doing it. Like, I'm going to be the one sitting in the office saying, replace this, and then, you know, the minions will do this shit for me. But in the beginning, you kind of have to do everything yourself, so you should build your business around your strong points, around the things that you're good at, not the things that you suck at. And then, you know, eventually you are going to have to do the things that you suck at. And when that time comes, you know, hopefully you've made enough money that you can have somebody else do it. In my case, it ain't even really a money thing. It's just, you know, finding people who do this kind of troubleshooting on this specific uh, thing that 
that I'm, I'm doing here is damn near impossible. And it's not like you put up a Craigslist ad and you just find some dude who's like, yeah, I know that, oh, the, it, I know that, that that's not a GPU issue. That's EDID code is not being recognized. So you probably have an issue on pin 16 where the data, the EDID line isn't, you know, whatever. The, you're not going to find that shit on Craigslist. You're not going to find that in, like, the monster.com. So one of the things before I even bother cleaning it that I'm going to do is I'm going to move each pin. I'm going to try to. So pins two and three are supposed to be shorted together. So if while I'm hitting the pin with the tweezer it moves, that means it's not soldered properly. You'll tell. We'll be able to see. Sometimes it's really hard to tell the pin moving versus the flux moving and changing your perspective. Like, see that? See how you, it looks like an optical illusion, like the pin is moving when I'm actually just moving the flux? See, that's why you get a proper dispenser for your flux. Let's clean it a little bit. Once it's clean, I'll be able to take a closer look at more magnification. The first one bothers me. It shouldn't bother me, but it does. Why the hell do I expect to solder anything at dirty X? What am I nuts? Okay, now we're going to fix the sides up, since I was moving that around without adding new flux, which means those solder joints probably suck. So when I was aligning it, I did a lot of moving this around without adding flux, and again, you get really shitty solder joints when you don't add flux, but you're adding solder, or you're adding heat to the solder. 
So I just put some flux on both sides of this. Okay. Now to clean again. This would have went a lot faster if the soldering method I was trying to show you actually worked. But I made a complete and utter mess of it, which is why it did not work. But as you can see, it still c came out looking pretty damn clean. Even at 30x, like, this is good stuff. Like, let's see, 30x, yeah. Yeah, man, at 30x, like, I, I truly, I can't say that I'm mad at this one bit. I'm not exactly happy at the amount of time that it took me, but... What are you gonna do? What are you gonna I promise I'm going to stop tossing Q-tips at you. This is why I was never good at basketball. This is why I was never on the basketball team. I mean to get the Q-tips in the garbage, but I keep accidentally hitting you. clean that alright so <laughs> that's mine but you can use it Same just boot it if you want to boot in to test something yeah. boot into the one labeled fur mark yeah This is a place that I like to go to on 7th Avenue called Muscle Maker Grill. Not because I'm into the whole bodybuilding thing. It's just, I just kind of like the food. And if you read their menu closely, you'll notice that it's, uh, it's a turkey's worst nightmare. Because everything's like turkey bacon, turkey meatballs, turkey burger, turkey this, turkey that. And that's kind of how I think an Apple motherboard feels when we run Fairmark on it. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of cruel almost, you know. To but we do it on a regular basis. But I, I just feel like they're crying and screaming abuse every time you actually try to run for a mark on it. On it. But yeah, almost every machine that leaves here has that run on it. In addition to a couple of other things, if what we did was related to your GPU, because I don't, tr I just don't trust them at all. Let's see. These are the bent tweezers. Boo. So I can use this. Chime. Chime and screen. Chime and screen. Chime and screen. Okay, so we have a chime. Now do I have a question mark folder? Come on, give me a question mark folder. One of my favorite things to see unless I'm doing data recovery. <laughs> 